In this video, I'm going to go over class member functions in C++. So class member functions are also known as methods, and we can think of them as functions that are attached to objects of a particular type. So let's go over an example. Here I'll define a class rectangle. And what we'll do is make rectangle objects with this class. Now rectangles have a length and a width. So we'll define some private member variables for the length and width of a rectangle. We'll say private, double length, and double width. Next, we'll define a public member function that can set the length and the width. So here we'll say public, and then to define the member function, we can say void set dimensions, double L, double W. And what we'll do is set the length and set the width using the parameters that this function is going to be passed. So set dimensions is given a length L and a width W as double values. It has no return value because all we're going to be doing is setting these private member variables. And what we're doing is setting length equal to the value that was passed in here, L, and setting width equal to the value that was passed in here, W. So we can then call this function that is going to be basically attached to our rectangle objects. So let's try out what we've got so far. So down here, we can now create a rectangle object by saying rectangle, and we'll say rectangle one. And we could call the set dimensions function that is a member function of rectangle. So it's going to be attached to rectangle objects. We can think of it as. So we'll say rectangle one dot set dimensions, and we'll say 10 and 20. So what this function will do is set the private member variables, length and width of this rectangle object instance to 10 and 20. Let's make a function that will actually return a value now. Let's say the perimeter of the rectangle. But this time what we're gonna do is define the function outside of this class definition here. So that is something we can do. We can define our class member functions outside of the class definition here. So what I'll say here is double perimeter. And we'll make a function to return the perimeter of the rectangle, and it's gonna return a double. Now this is what's called the function declaration or the function prototype. And because it's underneath this public access specifier here, this will be a public member function. But we can actually define the function outside of this class definition here if we say double rectangle colon colon perimeter. So when we say double and then rectangle colon colon perimeter, this here is now defining this perimeter function here as part of this class. It's providing the definition for this perimeter declaration here. So we could then say return two times the length plus the width to return the rectangle perimeter, and this will work. We can now call this function to get the rectangle perimeter. And we could try that out down here. We could say C out, we'll say perimeter, colon, and we'll output rectangle one dot perimeter with an end L. So if we save and run this, we should get that the perimeter of the rectangle is 60. And that is what we get here. We get a perimeter of 60. So we can also have private member functions. And private member functions, like private member variables, cannot be accessed and used outside of the class. So let's go over an example of a private member function. Let's make a private member function for calculating the area of a rectangle. So if I said here, double area, and we said return length times width, this will calculate the area of a rectangle. And we could use this member function within the class, but not outside of it. So if down here I said rectangle one dot area, and I just try to call it, we'll get an error telling us we can't do that. But we can access these private member functions within the actual class. 
So if I did make a function called, let's say, print area, we'll say void print area here. And inside of this function here, we use the private member function area. This is okay. So here we can access that private member function area and this will be okay. So let's call it print area now. We'll say rectangle one dot print area. And all it's going to do is output area colon, output the area, and then a new line. So now if we save and run this, we should get an area of 200 because we've got 10 times 20 and we do. So one more thing we could do with our class member functions is we can also provide them with default values for their parameters. So here, set dimensions accepts two parameters, the length L and the width W. We can set default values for these. So here for W, I could say W is equal to five. And then if I don't provide a second parameter here, W is going to automatically be set to five when the function is called. So let's go over an example of that. Here I'll say rectangle, rectangle two, and then I'll say rectangle two dot set dimensions, but only provide one dimension. I'll provide five as a length. So we've got a five by five rectangle, which is kind of a square, but whatever. And we'll just output the perimeter now of the rectangle. And this will work just as before. And then we'll also output the area using the area function. So we'll say rectangle two dot print area. And if we save and run this, we'll get the expected values for perimeter and area as well. So we can have default parameter values for our class member functions as well. So this has been the basics of how to use class member functions in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.